Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to Having a Crack at Kerbal Space Program. Now, this is a game where you design and build spaceships and send these Kerbins here off into space to build space stations, discover the moon, and other planets in the system. It's uh, currently out in a, a kind of a beta mode, so it's, the game is not completely finished yet. Now, I got this from Steam. It's about... Well, it's been on, on and off offer, so you'd have to check out the price at the time. I have played this a bit already, um, but to be honest, it has quite a steep learning curve. I mean, the easy stuff is quite easy to do, but as it gets on, there's a bit more complicated stuff to it. So, let's have a go. Let's start a game, and I'm going to see how much I can show you. Uh, right. First of all, uh, there is some training. We're going to skip that. Uh, we're going to start a new game. And we're going to be... Master Hellish, of course. There's now several flags to choose from. I like that one. We're going to have that one. Uh, there is going to be a career mode in this, uh, where you have a certain amount of money, then you must explore, and when you explore, you're granted money etc. I don't know all the details about that, but for now there's a sandbox mode, and to be honest, that's good fun for me. Let's get started, and we'll have a look and get into the game a bit. Now I'm going to leave the loading screens in so you can see how long it takes to load on my particular PC. This is actually the main menu. Um, I know it looks pretty simple at the moment, but bear with us a moment. So this is the uh, vehicle assembly building where you can make your main rockets. Over here we've got the space hangar where you can build space planes. Uh, astronaut complex where you can recruit your Kerbins and I think in later um, expansions you'll be able to uh, train them up possibly as well. Satellite area where you can uh, have a look at what you've got out there in space. This building, not clickable at the moment, they've probably got something that might be the training camp for that, don't know, we'll see. Well, I'm going to go straight into actually having a go and what we're going to do is uh, we're not going to do anything too complicated straight off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little crafter that will go up into the atmosphere, uh, through the atmosphere, sorry, into space, and then come back down again. So uh, scroll wheel moves you up and down the craft like uh, like so, and um, shift scroll kind of does an in and out zoom sort of thing. Right, all I'm going to do with this is that I'm going to get, uh, first of all, the ship goes up and down in stages and separate stages you need to do various different things now first of all I'm going to put this decoupler on and that will allow me to decouple the command pod from the rest of the aircraft when we're coming back down speaking of coming back down I'm going to go into the utilities and just flick through until I find these parachutes now you can put the parachutes on like this and we'll just zoom in a bit there so you can see what I'm doing now here in the controls you've got angle snap on and off so this is off you can see you can put it almost exactly where you uh, were anywhere you want put angle snap on, snap, snap on and it will jump to the nearest snap which is quite good you can also have symmetry mode where you can have multiple items so you've got three four and yeah, six there I think that one's eight there we don't need that many we're gonna have four on this particular command pod and there we go, we've got four parachutes on. Now you can see in the bottom right hand corner here, this is where our staging is starting to stack up and it's already wrong. It kind of guesses a sort of order based on how, uh, the order that you build the craft in. But you need to go in there, create extra stages, move things from one thing to another. So uh, at the moment, the first thing that will happen is we'll decouple and then the parachutes will de deploy. And that's activated by yourself. Right, so uh, we've got a command pod. Uh, we can come down safely with parachutes. We need to go up. So to go up, we need some sort of proportion. And I think what we'll do, we'll get a large fuel tank. There we go, very large fuel tank. And should we have a second one? No, we won't bother with a second one at this stage. Uh, what I will do, though, is we will get something to couple some boosters on the side. Yeah, here we go. Uh, we don't want... F oh, we could have four. Yeah, let's... No, no, no. Two will do. We don't want too much power on this first one. So there's a fuel tank and a coupler. What I'm going to do is then you have to put an engine on it. These are the different engines. 
and that will burn the fuel so put an engine on the bottom of that tank and some of these solid fuel boosters they have an engine in them on the end there so what I'm going to do is just put that like that and there we go that's looking pretty good that looks like it might get us into uh, into uh, space but we want some sort of control uh, these ones here these there's got lots of different types of flappy bits you can put like flap it and use uh, oh for when you're placing things WASD rotates them takes a little bit of getting used to but it seems to be all right here so you put the flappy bits on I'm gonna put these flappy bits and we're gonna have four of them like so and that will help guide us um, when we go up down we can steer the craft well we're nearly there uh, I'm just gonna put a cone on the nose there help with the wind resistance can we put ones on here and this is the only problem putting items in a 3d space we're using a 2d game or a 2d window there we go that's better right uh, so thrusting bits steery bits command potty part right we get to name our craft so let's name it hellish craft mark one there we are no I'm not really known for my originality with my names save that you can save this ship um, and one last thing I think we need to do is so it doesn't fall over on the launch pad we're gonna give it a couple of stands there we go so it's built our simple space rockets built we just need to make sure everything's in the right order so first of all those side engines fire then the docking clamps release then the main engine fires well no I want all that at the same time so I'm gonna bring the main engine and the docking clamps down here then we release the side boosters then we release the main fuel tank on the way down and then we parachute well let's save that and launch launch okay so this game is a single player game um, it's it'd be quite cool to have some sort of multiplayer interaction maybe two people building something at once might be quite cool but uh, I don't think it necessarily needs it um, the controls are quite good um, you know there's a very intuitive way in you fairly a lot of the controls are normal you just move your ship around and scroll about as normal uh, WASD for moving the craft and so forth um, but I did have to look up some of the controls on the wiki um, I don't know if settings there's not a lot of there's nowhere I've found yet to actually change the controls in game but that could just be because the game isn't 100% finished yet so that might be part of it as I said earlier this game is a little bit difficult once you start trying to do more complicated stuff but I'll show you that later and the physics in this game is actually quite good the um, way that you, the acceleration works and the uh, the parabolas of the curves when you fire the rockets that's all good too well I suppose you're dying for me to set this off so uh, let's get that throttle to maximum hold shift there we go and now we'll do a tediously long launch 3, 2, 1, go there we go and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn SAS on by pressing T. What that does, it stabilizes the craft. It automatically adjusts these fins. I'm going to just see me turning those fins there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the craft slightly. There we go. And then I'm going to try and make it just curve over the ocean a little bit. There we go. That's better. As, uh, we want to get in a bit of a curve as we do this burn now these solid fuel boosters on the side you can see the fuel down here they're nearly out nearly out of fuel and there they go this next stage here stage two if we do that it will release these clamps on the side away they go and now we're just on the single engine on the fuel tank and we'll see how high we can get now I said the physics was really good there's actually a time warp function here you can see in the top left here I can increase the speed if I just do that 
times 2 times 3 and back to times 1. Now I'm not going to do that much. The reason is is the physics goes completely wappy when you do it if you're uh, if you're thrusting <laughs> if you're doing maximum thrusting, you get problems at high speed. That's what I'm telling you. Um yeah, so when I when you're taking off and stuff like this, oh look, you can see the moon in the background. Um just do it single speed. Now this comes this brings me to probably my biggest bugbear of the game so far is that because you're unable to speed up the parts like this where you're burning properly, it makes it difficult to play the game in any sort of vast speed. You have to wait for these long burns. As you can see here, uh, in the atmosphere we are coming up through the gauge, we're getting close to space. use it for deceleration so we're pretty much in space now I'm going to turn the throttle off I'm going to see if I can rotate the craft it's very thin atmosphere up here so it only just turns I'm going to give it a bit of throttle whoa bit of throttle just to make it go this way a little bit cut the engine and there we are we'll leave the uh, craft like that and we are in we're in space now there we are now one of the things I like about this game there's so many different ways you can build these ships I've seen some right weird designs okay so let's just skip down here and go to the orbit map this shows you the sort of orbit that you're going to have now we're not actually going to have an orbit we're just going up well I suppose it's an orbit but it's uh we're just going to be going up we're going to reach about 300 Yep, 300,000 meters, and then we're going to come back down again. So whilst you're up here, it is, and uh, there's no engine burn happening. It's quite safe just to uh, increase the game speed. See, here we are. You can see we're going up, and now we're starting to come back down again. So we reach space, and we're on our way back down. I'm just going to let the game go a little bit. Bring us good speed until we start hitting the thicker atmosphere. Here we go. Starting to hit the thick atmosphere. Going to try and turn the jet round and throttle up a bit. Try and use that last little bit of fuel that we saved to decelerate us. There we go. All the fuel's gone. I'm going to press the button again. That'll detach us. From the fuel tank which is a weight <laughs> and here we go now speed slowing down as we oh yep slowing down as we go through the atmosphere last thing to do is deploy the parachutes you can see here from this sort of range the graphics of the land around the craft and the water is very basic but that's not really what it's about so much it's more about what you're doing and how, and it does draw you in in that way. Have the, sh the shoots have just opened up now, and Bill, Jebediah, and Bob, who are in this command module, are quite happy now. You can see our shadow to come back to the planet. I'm just going to speed the game up, otherwise these last uh, 300 meters are going to take a while. And down we go. Well, that's quite good, isn't it? There we go, safely down to the planet. Let's go back to the space center. Uh, yeah, this is sandbox. There should be a career mode coming up, and that sounds like a good sort of thing. Uh, no multiplayer that I know of yet, but we'll see about that. Let's do a slightly more complicated one, shall we? Now, last time I tried to do this, it was an epic failure, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to start with the same craft we have here. I'm going to take these support struts off, get rid of them. But I'm going to increase it considerably. We'll take these side bits off and we'll just uh, move everything upwards. What I'm going to do is we're going to try and make a craft that will go into orbit um, and stay in orbit. So I want quite a gentle, I don't want a really powerful engine.
Hmm, looking through the different ones. 50. No, that's too small. There we are, that one's quite a nice one. And that's the one we're going to use once we get into orbit. So now we need to make a lower section and disconnect that for a second because I want to be able to put a decoupler in there. There we go. So now uh, this top section here is for when we're actually in space. When we're in space though, we can't use these wings to guide us around or we, it's very inefficient to do so anyway. So what I'm going to do, uh, ah, here we go. So I'm going to get some of this stuff. And this is mono propellant. And the mono propellant can be used to power these thrusters. So I'm just gonna try and get four thrusters on here like so. And four thrusters on here like that. There we are. That's, that should give us maneuverability in space. Um, now, hmm. So, I'm going to put these radial decouplers on. Like that. And then I'm going to attach uh, big fat fuel tanks to them. Uh, double ones, I think. Yes. Double fuel tanks. Uh, I did want to put a, like a nose cone. Let's take that off. We won't need that in space. Big cones on it. There we go. So these thrusters will burn for ages. They will. Uh, and we will put the big engine on the bottom of them. Cool. Now, because of they're not very well attached, it's very poor stability. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to put a little rod from that tank to that tank there, like that. And that will just help stabilize it a bit. Now, where are those wingy bits? Technical term, I know. There we go. So if I put that there, and I put that there that should help us maneuver on the way up and then what I wanted to do is just give ourselves some extra boost to take off because this is gonna be really heavy if you create something too heavy it's not even going to launch let's zoom in a bit put that on there I'm gonna put another one uh, I don't think it should go there. I think it should go there, actually. And I'm going to put some solid boosters on. Like that, and like... That. Oh, missed it. Try again. There? Yep, yeah, there we go. And then... We'll just try and put these aerodynamic, there we go, aerodynamic bits on there and there. Right, that's a bit more of a beefier craft, isn't it? So we can control ourselves when we're in space. We've got a, something to burn whilst we're up there. I just really want to check these bits down the side here. Um, let's see, so... That's that engine. So this engine, I want to bring it down to the bottom. This engine here, I want to bring it down to the bottom as well. And then we've just got to work out all these decouplers. So that's that decoupler. Those, those ones. Okay, so I think I think they can go in a group together. Yes, they can. Put that there. And these ones are the ones that release the main tanks, and that releases a... Right, I think we're ready to give this one a bit of a try. It's probably not going to work. I know it sounds a bit uh, pessimistic, but... I like to be realistic about these things. There you are, plenty of supports there. This is our Mark II craft for... We're going to try and get into orbit. 
Let's give it a go and see if it falls apart or see if it gets up there. Oh, it's a bit bouncy. Right, let's put those thrusters up to maximum. Turn the SAS on and launch. Go! look how slow it's taking off compared to the last one. It's a good job we put these solid uh, fuel boosters on the side there just to get it going. See from beneath, shall we? There's the rear view from beneath as we rocket upwards. We're going straight up at the minute, that's fine. I'm going to try and angle it a little bit now. There we go. Now, this is the dangerous part where we try and get rid of these solid fuel boosters. We'll see if I had the right. Oh, there we go. I don't know what they're going to land on, but we'll have to just keep our fingers crossed for the folks down there. Now, because we put uh, two fuel tanks on top of each other... Oh, we're actually slowing down. Our speed here was slowing. That's not good. We might not make orbit at this rate. Oh, hang on a second. No, we're speeding up now because we're using up fuel. So... <laughs> Oh my word. <laughs> yep, yeah, slowly speeding up. I wonder if we can just increase time a little bit. If we increase time a little bit, the physics having a little bit of problem there. As long as it doesn't shake itself apart. I think this one's going to be too heavy for its own good. See, we're not even... We're only at uh, 7,000 metres. That's it. Although, we are starting to actually get somewhere now. Or we're starting to accelerate a bit. Ten thousand. We might actually make it into space, because what you've got to remember is is that this top section here that I've highlighted in green is a fuel tank that isn't being used at the minute. That's the one we're going to put into space, and when we're in space, we're going to use that fuel tank to get into orbit. Now, I'm not sure how that's done in real life, but or whether it's even the best way to do it in this game, but that's what I'm going to give it a go at. 